Hi everyone and welcome back to another Tech Bytes review. Today we are taking a look at the X-Keys L-Track. Uh, this is the Pi Engineering model, uh, not CST. I believe Pi Engineering um, bought this particular line along with a couple others from, uh, from CST a number of years back. Uh, this is manufactured here in the United States in Michigan. Um, it's been reviewed uh, a handful of times, but you see it a lot on the forums as being considered uh, one of the, the the highest regarded trackballs in terms of build quality, longevity, um, overall feel, and and just the the, the functionality and feature set. So uh, we'll we'll have fun with this one today. We're going to cover everything from build quality to uh, to use. May even take it apart and look at some internals as well. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Normally we cover build quality from the start and we'll do the same here, but because of just how simple of a design this is, I, I think we may mix it up a little bit and actually take a look inside the trackball and, and see what we have. Um, but starting from the outside, let's take a look at the shell of the unit. Um, this is a rather large trackball. I know from a lot of the stock images, it's hard to tell just how big this thing is. Um, I do have a tape measure here so you can see from, from top to bottom, we're just a little over seven inches. So it's much larger than it appears, uh, and the way that that fits on your hand is actually uh, has this nice little slope, um, and, and you just kind of rest from there, uh, and, and you're able to move the ball around. Um, the, the plastic itself is extremely high-quality plastic. Um, I, I believe it's PBT. Uh, hard to say. haven't really dug into it, but it is, I mean, it's solid. It is one giant solid piece. Uh, there's three screws that hold everything together. Nothing under the sticker, luckily. Um, everything uh, that comes out from these guys, uh, specifically, you know, I mean, this was previously owned by by CST, but now uh, now Pi Engineering. But the, this line, this particular line, the L track is uh, has the reputation it has for a reason. It's it's extremely easy to take apart. Uh, it's extremely durable. Um, you have very standard functionality. So you have a scroll wheel right up here. Uh, you have your middle mouse button click, which exists right here. You have obviously your trackball and then left and right mouse button. So th these are giant, which allows you to either hit it with your uh, with your thumb. You can also hit it with your fingers. Um, it, it really kind of leaves uh, a, a lot up to you on how you want to use it. Um, one of the other features that this has are uh, two 3.5 millimeter jacks here. Um, I'll get into that later. Uh, you can do some things like custom switches. Uh, Pi Engineering also offers some some additional buttons that they manufacture themselves that you can plug into, but I may do a follow-up video if there's interest. Uh, I have wired my own switches for these. Um, I'd be happy to, to put together a video that explains how to do that. But overall, I mean, it's it's a very simplistic design. So from a build quality standpoint, it's really difficult to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to dig into a, a lot of different metrics and whatnot here. Uh, overall, it's just, it's solid. Um, the switches themselves, I, I don't believe they use Omron. It's uh, it, it's not super clicky, not super tactile, but it just it feels nice and sturdy, um, a nice kind of uh, solid click at the bottom. Uh, this, I believe the switch sits somewhere up here. So hitting down here, you do have to apply a little bit more force than you would up in these top uh, quadrants up here, but nothing uh, from a deal breaker standpoint. The, the switches themselves feel sturdy enough uh, the, the scroll wheel itself is probably the biggest thing that I've seen people complain about. Honestly, I, I find it pretty easy to, to hit with, um, with my middle finger, but I do have rather large hands. Uh, so all in all, uh, build quality gets a, a giant thumbs up. This thing will outlast any other mouse that you have, uh, as well as any other trackball. Now let's talk about what it's like to use one of these things. Um, I do have a side-by-side -side comparison uh, of the Kensington Expert mouse here as well, so we can see them together. Uh, you can see size-wise, they're they're similar. Um, if if you were including the wrist rest here, if you were to take this off, this uh, the, the L track is going to be slightly uh, slightly longer and slightly more narrow. Um, we we do have about the same slope for these, um, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, this one is on what I believe to be ceramic. Um, uh, bearings in here. I don't know if you can make that out in the camera, but they're the little red bearings. I do believe they're ceramic and it, it does add for like a very nice, smooth, fluid motion. You can see with just a single finger, I can, I can kind of toggle left and right. This one, on the other hand, the, uh, the L track is a little, it takes a little bit more force to get going, but it is on 
uh, metal roller bearings, not ceramic. So there's a bar that goes across this way and a bar that goes across this way, I believe. And, and it has two little cylinders on each side. And I'll show you when we take this apart. Um, but this just sits right there and, and rolls across it. What that means is that this hardly ever gets gunked up. You almost never need to take this apart. So in almost two years of using this daily usage, I've only had to take it apart to clean it one time. Um, those roller bearings mean that you really get this pixel perfect movement um, every single time. And it's, uh, it's durable as hell. You never have to clean it. You don't have to worry about it gunking up. It's just vastly superior in every way to standard uh, ceramic bearings. Um, and, and that's just the, the, the truth of it all. I, the only complaint I really have is the, the way that this is sloped. So whenever you put your hand on it, if we had it on a desk, your hand, as you can see, is tilted up at a really awkward angle. Whereas when you're using this, uh, the expert, it's almost a little bit more uh, straight. And it, it's tough because I'm standing for, the, for filming here, but this one really does uh, require some form of wrist rest. I have a little bean bag that I put here um, and it allows my wrist to sit a little bit straighter. Um, so let's go ahead and jump on to the inside. All right, so here we are inside. I know I didn't film this part of it, but it took me maybe 30 seconds. You can see there's only three screws involved, uh, just a standard you know, electronics uh, Phillips head screwdriver, and that is it. Um, so inside is, is very, uh, very easy to, to see what's going on. You obviously have your PCB here. You can see these are the metal rollers that I was referring to, um, which and the laser sits right back here, just like it normally does on any other trackball. But this just sits nicely in between those, those rollers, and you can see it just rolls, and this barrel right here um, is actually ridged and so it will collect the gunk and because it has a bit of a dip underneath it um, That gunk will just roll around the side and will eventually form on the barrel there But it doesn't get in the way of the ball um, Which is part of the reason why you, you never really have to clean this thing um, It just the the way these these uh, these bearings are set up in the rollers. It just makes for a, a really nice self-cleaning uh, type of solution here so I thought it was worth showing that uh, very minimal parts. So if you're worried about you know longevity, how, how long is this thing really going to last? I mean, this is it, right? It's three basic parts. You have the top part of the housing, you have the bottom part, and then you have the PCB board. And, and that's really, and that's it. it. It doesn't get much simpler than that. So the ball, you can see, would, would just sit right up in here. Um, the switches, as I was referring to earlier, they are not Omron. They're actually these guys here. I believe it is a Panasonic uh, type switch. They're easy enough to find. Uh, the other one's over here on the side, if you could see that. Um, they're easy enough to find online. I think they run about 60 cents a piece. So if and when these switches wear out over you know, the next eight years, uh, they're super, super easy to solder back in. And again, if you have any questions, customer service has been nothing but helpful. Another thing that a lot of people will do when they get these, this is definitely a, kind of a modder's dream when it comes to a, a trackball. You can see there's a lot of open pins um, here on the side. This does allow for a lot of different types of connections. You can see you even have open pins on the switches and things. So there's there's a lot left open. Uh, you can see the wires coming out of these two front ports for the uh, the 3.5 millimeter jacks, and they just feed right into this uh, this main clip unit right here. So all kinds of possibilities. Obviously, this is easy enough to pop out if you wanted to do your own type of custom solution. Uh, let's get into that next, and I'll show you my custom switch that I've hooked up. So let's get this back together, and uh, we'll talk about some, some of the customization that you can do on the, the jack. So this is my custom switch solution, and it's uh, <laughs> obviously not the, the highest quality. Um, this, this could be done much better. Uh, people 3D print cases that, that stick onto the side of the l track and whatnot, and those are all open source. You can find CAD diagrams for them and everything else, but um, all I did was I took just a standard 3.5 millimeter uh, mono cable. Again, mono, you don't wanna have the audio portion in the cable, you just wanna have the, the red and the black wires. But all you do is you really, you just solder the wires onto just a standard, this is an MX Blue that I had laying around. Uh, you plug it in to your mouse on either one of these jacks here. And there you have it. This now acts as an L4 and L5 mouse button. And there you have it, everyone. That concludes my review on the X Keys L Track trackball. Uh, this is a phenomenal trackball. I can't recommend it enough um, if you use it for just standard 
a computer, whether it be video editing or just standard computing, browsing the web, you, you really can't go wrong with this trackball. It'll last you a lifetime. Uh, it's super easy to take apart, super easy to customize and repair if you want to. It just blows the other palm to fingertip trackballs completely out of the water. Um, the, the customer service is phenomenal with it as well. I, I just can't recommend it enough. I would say the only knock on this is the, uh, the the angle of the wrist, but that's easily fixed with a bean bag or just anything that you have to kind of raise your wrist up so it's not stuck at, uh, at that kind of angle. So you get something a little bit straighter as you're using it. Um, but really, aside from that, it's phenomenal. I, I would not recommend this for gaming. I know some people use it for FPSs. If you're doing a, uh, any kind of game that involves clicking and holding while, while scrolling this, Maybe you get used to it. I, I didn't, I couldn't, um, and so I couldn't use it for that. That's really the only thing that kept me from using this as my, my daily driver. Um, other than that, great trackball, highly recommend it. It does come in at a hefty price tag of about 135, but honestly, for what you get, you, you they're, in my opinion, they're not charging enough. This is, this is just great um, all the way around, cross board. So thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next review.